Your home? Your fortress, right? Maybe not. Well, in this video, we're going to look at some basic things you can do to improve your home security and hopefully prevent you becoming a statistic like one of the 400,000 homes that was burgled last year. Now, there are people who proactively take steps to fortify their home, but there is also a huge percentage of people who only consider improving home security after an event has occurred, and by then the psychological trauma has been inflicted. 84% of victims of domestic burglary reported some degree of emotional impact. So the aim is to make your house less desirable than your neighbours by making it a harder target. Criminals want an easy meal ticket, so if a property looks too difficult to enter, then they'll just move on to an easier job. Home security is something we should all be thinking of all of the time, but the chances are you moved into your house, installed a bit of kit, and that was it. Some of you may be in rented accommodation and therefore reliant on the landlord to sort stuff out. You may also be in some denial about this even happening to you because one, you're a good person, two, you may also feel safer because you live in a nice area. But neither one of those reasons will provide you with any immunity and being unprepared is what the criminal is banking on. Crime, particularly domestic burglary, has reduced somewhat during Covid but the criminal element still exists and the emergency services are stretched even more than they ever have been which means there's less people to watch them and they know it so the onus is on you to protect you and yours okay so where do we start bearing in mind the key objectives are one to dissuade the criminal from entering two prevent entry or at least slow it down before help can arrive three ultimately protect your home and family so first, I suggest you investigate the current crime statistics in your area. Here in the UK, you can go to police.uk and check out your postcode activity. This will at least give you a baseline to work from and some insights as to what's going on nearby. Next, you want to put a series of hurdles in the way of the would-be burglar and make his or her life difficult. A lot of people in this sector talk about an approach called the rings of security, light layers of protection that you wrap around yourself. So the biggest ring that you have or around your house is the outside perimeter and this can include your fence, gates, dogs if you have them, lighting and signage. The next smaller ring or layer of protection would be points of entry so we're talking about doors, garage doors and windows. The next ring would be an alarm and some kind of CCTV system. And the next ring might be an internal camera system or communications and finally the last ring would be you and a weapon of some sort. Now obviously that's one that complies with UK law and is used out of necessity and to a reasonable degree. Particularly in other countries, a lot of people make the assumption that the weapon is enough. Personally I feel that's a little misguided on a couple of levels. One being, have you actually trained with the weapon under replicated conditions and scenarios? Do you actually possess the right mindset to actually utilise the weapon? And could you cope with the emotional and physical fallout after it? Secondly, why would you allow somebody to get in that close without putting any preventative measures in place? You put your seatbelt on when you get in the car, right? Finally, you want to be able to reason in court that you put measures in place to make your house a fortress. So the fact that the guy got in so far meant he was determined to cause me some harm. Okay, so let's go back outside to the perimeter. A fence will keep most people out, but not the determined type. So if it's damaged, get it fixed. If you've got gates and can padlock them shut before dusk, do it. Also, if the padlock is broken, don't just close it for show, replace it and maintain it. If you've got bushes or foliage around the property, keep them trimmed and don't let them obscure any part of your house, unless it actually prevents unauthorised access to outsiders. Clear up any unnecessary clutter and store your wheelie bins. They make really good ladders, so put them away or at least fasten them further away from the property. Good outside lighting is a must. So use a mixture of permanent and triggered lights. Remember to have triggered lights for approaches to the property and permanent lights on entries. Doesn't matter if it upsets your neighbours as it serves a purpose for them too. Dogs, as always, are useful as the deterrent if you have one, but a few points about whether you should display or beware of the dog sign. In my opinion, if you don't have a dog, then fine, but if you have a dog, forget it. Personally, I'd prefer to keep one, the element of surprise, but also, Displaying the notice could be seen as an admission of liability, i.e. it will be assumed that you had prior knowledge that your dog was dangerous and therefore could inflict injury. I know, ridiculous, right? Surprisingly, the favoured approach was the front of the property, with doors and windows being the key points of entry. So here's some simple tips for doors. Keep them locked and don't leave the keys in or visible. 
and dead bolts and if possible switch out the screws in the strike plate for longer ones or opt for a larger strike plate size. In terms of garage doors, firstly make sure that they're connected to the existing alarm system and don't leave them open and remember to deadlock or at least add an additional deadbolt if not used often. If you have one with a remote opener, make sure you don't leave the remote in the car overnight or for long periods of time. If you have a patio sliding door, these can often warp or the rails that they sit on can loosen over time, which means they become easier to push out. So make sure you get that readjusted or add an additional bolt to prevent them opening. Another trick is to place a length of wood along the inside track of the door to prevent them opening as well. Additional items you can use on doors are emergency door braces, which add integrity and prevent them opening. Another tool are alarm door wedges, which emit a loud sound when the door is opened. If your door has a lot of glass in it, then consider replacing or strengthen using 3M window film. Check if your window locks work, or you can add a cable window restrictor, so this is useful when you have small children. If you have existing window bars, make sure they are bolted sufficiently and can't just be pulled out. In terms of internal and external CCTV, you can get a decent system fitted or self fit for about 500 quid. Even dummy cameras will make people think twice. If that seems daunting to you, then get them professionally fitted. But remember, cameras will generally only help after the fact. For something more responsive, I know as a film in this, ADT offer a installation and monitoring service for a reasonable monthly subscription. All right. As always, it will come down to what best fits you and your property and also your budget. So these are just my own thoughts and there is plenty of good information out there and I would always recommend you consult a reputable security firm should your budget allow it. I hope you found it useful. Take care of yours and stay safe.